Welcome to the ICTY weekly press briefing. My name is Magdalena Spalinska. I'm spokesperson for the registry and chambers. And together with me today, also representative of the Office of the Prosecutor, Alexander Kontic, member of the prosecutor's immediate office. The appeals judgment in the case of uh, Ante Gotovina and Mladen Markac will be rendered this Friday uh, at 9 o'clock in the morning. On the 15th of April 2011, the two Croatian generals were found guilty of crimes against humanity and violations of the laws and customs of war committed by Croatian forces during the 1995 Operation Storm military offensive in Croatia. They were sentenced to 24 and 18 years of imprisonment, respectively. The accreditation procedure for the media and members of the public wishing to attend the judgment will close this afternoon at 5 o'clock. Journalists are advised to arrive at 7.30 onwards on Friday morning to pick up their accreditation tickets from the main entrance. <coughs> A further two judgments were scheduled. The judgment in the retrial of Ramush Haradinaj, Idris Balay and Lahi Brahimai. The three former commanders from the Kosovo Liberation Army will be pronounced on the 29th of November 2012 at 9 o'clock in the morning in courtroom one. All three accused are charged with crimes committed in 1998 in western Kosovo. On 21st of July 2010, the Appeals Chamber partially quashed the acquittals of Haradinaj and Balay and ordered that the case be retried on six counts of indictment relating to the crimes committed in the KLA-run camp in Jablanica. The Appeals Chamber found that the trial chamber had failed to take sufficient steps to counter the witness intimidation that permitted the trial, in particular to secure the testimony of two witnesses. According to the Appeals Chamber, the trial chamber's error undermined the fairness of the proceedings and resulted in the miscarriage of justice. The appeals judgment in the case of Milan Lukic and Sredoja Lukic, two Bosnian Serbs accused of crimes committed in the eastern Bosnian town of Visegrad from 1992 to 1994, has been scheduled to be rendered on Tuesday, the 4th of December 2012 at 3 o'clock in the afternoon in courtroom one. On 20th of July 2009, the trial chamber sentenced Milan Lukic and Sredoj Lukic to life imprisonment and 30 years of imprisonment, respectively. Before turning to the courtrooms, I would flag up a decision rendered last Thursday by the ICTY president, Judge Theodore Meron, in the case of Momčilo Krajšnik. The president denied Krajšnik's third request for early release due to the gravity of the crimes he was convicted of and the fact that he has yet to serve two-thirds of his sentence. Krajišnik, one of the highest ranking wartime members of the Bosnian Serb leadership, was sentenced on 17th of March 2009 to 20 years of imprisonment. He was transferred to the United Kingdom in September 2009 and he has since been serving his sentence there. Turning to the courtrooms, proceedings in the trials of Radovan Karadzic, Ratko Mladic and Goran Hadzic continue this week and next. In the trial of Radovan Karadzic this afternoon, the defense is expected to call its next witness, Dusan Zurovac, former officer of the Sarajevo Romania Corps of the Republika Srpska Army. In the trial of Ratko Mladic, witness RM511 is testifying in closed session. In the case of Goran Hadzic, the trial chamber will continue to hear the testimony of protected witness GH015 tomorrow morning. Finally, I would like to inform you of the two following events taking place today. The tribunal together with the International Committee of the Red Cross, launched a three-day roundtable discussion 
in The Hague on the enforcement of sentences handed down by the ICTY. The purpose of the meeting is to consolidate the relationship between the ICTY and the enforcement states ahead of the completion of the tribunal's mandate and to ensure a smooth transition from the ICTY to the mechanism for international criminal tribunals. And finally, the tribunal's outreach program will be taking part today in an annual uh, teacher training on word citizenship on the theme Peace and Law, organized by a Dutch NGO, Educans in The Hague. Educans supports teaching methodology in the Netherlands, which is aimed at building a relationship of solidarity between Dutch students and their peers in other especially less developed countries. The outreach program will take this opportunity to provide Dutch teachers with information and tools to help them make the ICTY work and achievements meaningful to their students. This initiative forms part of Outreach's wider efforts to work with high school students and inform them about the tribunal's achievements. No, no statement from the Office of the Prosecutor. Thank you very much and I will open up for questions now. What will happen on Friday? We'll all learn on Friday. We are all awaiting uh, no, 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 the uh, judgment. A Mladen Naletelic Tuta. He's already in custody in Italy. But uh, I, 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 uh, I'm not, uh, I had, I had uh, unofficial information that he will be soon released. Is it true or not? I have no information about this case. Um, uh, and about uh, the judgment in Friday, do you know how, how many uh, uh, journalists or uh, ma ma media uh, accredited in this moment? At this moment, we have around 50 representatives of the me media accredited. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, the accreditation period is still open. Mm -hmm. We are closing at 5 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, I can tell you that the majority of the accredited journalists at this point are indeed from Croatia. We can see very big interest, of course, from the Croatian media. But not only, we have also a fair representation of international media such as uh, Reuters agency, for example, AP, AFP, and a number of journalists from uh, France and other countries as well. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, uh, thank you very much uh, and I'll see you next week. Thank you.